since many students were having issues trying to get SIGWIN installed and to get their first program running, I have decided to make this video tutorial. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We want to start by opening up our web browser, which I'm using, Firefox. And we want to go to the SIGWIN website, and which the website is www.cygwin.com. Enter. And this is the SIGWIN homepage. A little bit further down, we have two different types of installations. We have a 32-bit installation or a 64-bit installation. Most of us are going to have 64-bit installations, but if you're unsure, you can always, on Windows 7 and Vista, you can always click on the Start button, and you can right-click on Computer, and then click on Properties. Now, once you click on Properties, right here, once you click on Properties, System Type, 64-bit Operating System. It's just a couple of lines below the Windows Experience Index 4.5 or whatever number you have. So, then we're going to use a 64-bit installation, click on that, and then we're going to save the file. And that file saves relatively quickly. And now we're going to actually run that file. Click on Run. Yes, we want it to make changes to our computer. And then we're just going to follow the prompts as we see them. And so from the internet, sure, of course. Yes, we'll go to Sigma 64. Sure, we'll go to our normal download folder. Yes, we want a direct connection. Mirrors. Alright. Doesn't matter which mirror you pick, however, I would pick an HTTP mirror. I would probably not pick an FTP mirror. Um, it's all the same files just matters where in the world you're going to download it from. We'll just download it from the USA since that's closest to us. I see mirrors-USA. So click on add, click on next. And this is select packages. We only have two packages out of all of these that we need to install and trust me there are a lot. One of the packages is going to be under DEVEL right here and the other package will be under editors right here. Now we want to expand the developer package, so we're going to click on the little plus, and all these packages popped up. The package that we want is GCC-4. Notice how they're all in alphabetical order. So it's A, B, C, D. Alright, oh, and there's GCC. Alright, GCC-4. There are several GCCs, so make sure you get the core. So this is GCC compiler collection, and we want to go to skip, and we want to actually click on skip that makes that package unskipped so that's one that we want it's going to skip the rest of all these packages and then we're going to keep on going down until we reach the editors we want to expand the editors package is and the one that we want here is the nano package again it's in alphabetical order but there's nano right there so we want to not skip nano and that changed to 2.2.6.1 and all I did by that was I just left clicked on the skip. And once we have those, we can go to next. And we don't want to mess with anything here. We just want to click on next. And it's going to begin installing the packages. And finishing setting up SIGWIN. This process right here usually takes about 3 to 5 minutes, depending on your internet speed. I'm running DSL in the central US. Meantime with SIGLIN. This right here is 100% four different times. This first time is by far the longest. The second time is about five or ten seconds. Third, fourth time is about less than a minute each. But this time right here. This first one right here does take a little bit of time. It is trying to get 400 megabytes all downloaded and installed. As if I had anything else better to do at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> First one's done, the second one's done, we're working on the third. 
and just let this process continue on. Let's finish. desktop, which is already pre-selected, or add and or add an icon to the start menu. We're just going to do this right here. We're going to click finish, which will add an icon over here now. There it is. And now our Sigwin 64 terminal is now fully installed. Now let's use it to run a program. We're going to double click on that. And this is the terminal. Have you noticed before that I said that we needed to get an editor and a debugger decompiler, right? Nano is our editor, and we're going to be using that nano editor and the GCC debugger and, de and compiler probably pretty much throughout the entire course. So, I've actually created myself a little cheat sheet when I label it basics. We're going to be using this regularly, I'm sure. Notice how there's a specific format. Always have to use nano editor. Nano name a program dot c. Well, the program that I just made was called Hello World. So I'm going to type in nano. There I go again. Let's go back over to our terminal. Nano. Hello world, and you can label this whatever you want. One two three five four. We'll just try to be different. Hello, dot C. And we're going to hit enter. Notice how we went from the terminal to now we have the nano editor. I've already made the program, we just wanted to get it to run basically. So, And all this stuff was found in the beginning chapter of your book. So I'm just going to copy and paste from here. I copy, over here we're going to paste. And there's a little program, a little comment. Most of that stuff's included with C program. Right, and print it, hello world. So another thing to note is that down towards the bottom, right, we have these little up arrows, and then G, up arrow X for exit, up arrow O for write out, up arrow J for justify. The little up arrows are actually representing the control button. So we hold control X for exit. So since we're done with the program, we want to exit. So we'll hold control, hit X. Notice how that changed to save modified buffer, answer email, we'll destroy changes. Well, we just created a program, so of course we want to save the change, so we'll hit apply for yes. And then our next option that gives us is file name to write. Sure, we'll do hello world 12354.c. That sounds good, so we'll just hit enter at this point. And it brings us back to our terminal. At this point, now we want to debug and compile the program. If, de if debugging a turns out okay with nothing there, then it just automatically compiles and then we can run it. So again, following specific formats, GCC, and the name of the program was Hello World 12354.c dash O Hello World 12354 and hit enter. Everything, everything compiled okay, no debugging issues, so now we can go ahead and run our program. And here's how you run the program. It's a period, a front slash, and then the name of the program. So do period, front slash, and the name of the program was hello world12354. And notice how that it just displayed hello world. And that is how SIG1 gets installed with our compiler debugger and editor. And that is how the Hello World program works once it's actually programmed into your editor and compiled and ran. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope that it helps everyone out. Have a good day.